Hi, welcome to Paint Talk, the weekly show where I show a time-lapse video of one of my paintings and just kind of talk and give my opinion on a topic dealing with painting. If you're new to the channel, then welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero, and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so that you can get better faster. All right, so in a previous video, I talked about the things that I wish I knew when I first started painting, so I thought I should make a video of all the things that I'm glad I did do. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. All right, so the first best thing... I think that I did in terms of learning to oil paint was when I was 17, I took a painting class outside of my high school. My high school didn't offer oil painting. So I looked outside of my school to find a class and I'm so glad that I did. And I'm so glad that it was with the instructor that I was with. I got very lucky. I was in that class for about a year, but having that class and having one instructor, I was learning just from one person. I was, wasn't learning anything online, no videos. I was just strictly learning oil painting from this one person for about a year. And I feel like that was a very good thing. I've talked about this uh, in previous videos. I've talked about this in previous videos that it can actually be detrimental to learn from too many different people at once when you're first starting out because everybody paints differently. And I just find that it's very helpful to just learn from one person or one method for a solid period of time to get your feet under you. So I was in that class. We always painted from life. We would do uh, still lives. So we'd bring in uh, live models. And my instructor was Thomas Van Auken. He's a Richmond, Virginia based artist. He's really great. He has a great loose style. I'm so glad that my first introduction to painting was with somebody who painted like him. He didn't just paint one thing. He'd paint figures. He'd paint landscapes. He'd paint still lives. He'd paint anything. And I'm so glad that I didn't just settle for what was being offered at my high school. Like I, I sought out more instruction and better instruction and I got it. And I definitely would not be here today without that instruction. I was only there for about seven months before I went off to college, but getting that solid base just really set me off on my painting path. All right, now another thing that I'm really glad I did was I ignored what anybody thought about me being a painter or what any kind of ideas people thought an artist or a painter should be like. For example, that class that I took that I just talked about, I was the youngest person in there by probably like 25 years. And you know, that was a little weird. And you're like, I didn't know any other person my age that was oil painting or seeking extra classes outside of high school. It was weird being like the only person that you know that does that. I mean, in high school, I was a football player, you know, I was a jock and I went to college. I went to USC to play football. And I remember I got like a week or two into my classes and I didn't have a painting class and I was in a dorm, so I had nowhere to paint. I'm like, I need, I need a place to paint. Like I need to sign up for a painting class just so I have a place to go paint. And I had missed the opportunity to give a portfolio. So they look at your portfolio and they review you and they place you in what level painting they think you should be in. So I was like, all right, I missed that. I just have to sign up for painting 101. So I go and I sign up for painting 101. I walk into the class, literally they're like two weeks into class. So I walk in there, like obvious looking football player with my stuff on and pain instructor comes up to me and is like, uh, are you in the right place? I'm like, yeah, I've, I switched into painting. And I immediately know that he was thinking like, oh, he switched into painting because he wants an easy class. He's a football player and he just wants like an easy class to pass. And he was like, uh, you know, okay, but I mean, you can start. Like, I mean, everybody's like pretty far ahead and you can set up and, and you know, try and catch up over the next couple of weeks. And by the end of that class, I was already ahead of everybody else. <laughs> the teacher actually came up to me and was like, what are you doing in painting 101? You need to be in a much higher level. I'm like, I missed the portfolio thing. So like, I, this is the only one I can do. And he was like, are you okay being in painting 101? I'm like, yeah, as long as I can just paint and I just have a place to paint. And he's like, all right, you can kind of paint whatever you want <laughs> during the semester. And I actually developed a pretty good relationship with that paint instructor. And he was my instructor later on when I was a, a senior. I did like a one-on-one -on -one study with him. You know, same thing happened when my teammates found out like, you're a painter. And like, they kind of razzed me for it and made fun of me a little bit. But when they saw my paintings, I actually got a bunch of commissions from the football team asking me to paint stuff for them. So it was just that there was a lot of times in my life when being an oil painter and, and painting wasn't like considered a normal thing or like what people expected from me, but I've always kind of enjoyed that. I've always enjoyed, you know, having that opportunity to surprise people. I've also always just considered painting my own thing and I've never put any outside expectations on it or what it 
you know, what being an oil painter or an artist means. Like, I've never thought of it. Like, I just enjoy painting and I'm going to paint and I don't care about anything else. You know, when I meet people and I say I'm a painter, you know, a lot of them sometimes think certain things like, oh, are you broke? Are you weird? Are you edgy? And it's just like, no, I'm just the person and I like to paint. And, you know, having my, my Patreon with my students and getting to know people, all different kinds of people all over the world that paint, it's so cool. Like I have people that have all different types of professions, you know, people that are, you know, into sciences, people that are into teaching, like all different kinds and they all enjoy painting and it's so great. So don't ever think that you need oil painting to define you or that you gotta be a certain way to be a good painter or anything like that. Like I've seen people that have fallen into that trap, you know, just do whatever it is you wanna do. Make painting be whatever it is you want it to be for you. Now, another thing that I'm really glad that I did is, you know, about like 10 years into oil painting, I dropped my ego for a bit and went back and really got a handle on the fundamentals. You know, as I was painting and I was, you know, kind of bouncing around from instructor to instructor, I kind of realized what the common factor between all these different instructors and different methods were. And that was like a core set of fundamentals. I realized like, oh, the reason that the things in my paintings aren't working is because I don't have a good grip on these certain fundamentals. And when I say fundamentals, I'm talking things like drawing, um, understanding value, value relationships, color relationships, simplifying a scene, um, seeing big shapes. I heard those things all the time when I was learning to paint and I always just kind of blew past them and thought like, oh, I'll just figure things out from painting. And honestly, it really wasn't until I stopped and kind of focused on those things that I was able to develop a skill set that gave me a lot more confidence going into a painting. Before that, whenever I'd go into a painting, it was like a real toss up whether it was gonna turn out good or not. But once I got those foundations down, the percentage of my paintings that turned out good just went up a lot. Before then, it was just like, you know, you go out and you paint and, and sometimes you paint something and it turns out great and you're like, wow, like I'm really, get, I'm seeing improvement, I'm getting better. But then you go out another time and you're like, have I not learned anything? Like, what is going on with me? This painting is horrible. Like, it's like I've never painted before. Having those experiences has drastically decreased since I've gotten a hold of these fundamentals. I mean, just to show you how important I think that they are, when I made my first oil painting course, I specifically built it around these foundations of oil painting. When I was making the course, I was literally thinking like, all right, if I can make a course for my younger self to save myself time, like what would it look like? So I made it so it addresses the fundamentals in a fun, interesting, easy way to understand. Now the next thing I'm really glad that I did was at a certain point I started treating painting like a job. Before then, painting was really kind of a hobby. I had drawn and painted a lot when I was a kid and built up a really strong set of skills for my age. Like for like five years out of college, I was just kind of coasting on that. I really wasn't pushing myself. I was painting pretty often, um, but I wasn't really treating it like a day-to-day -day thing. And once I changed that, once I switched it and was like, all right, I need to paint every single day, that's when I really saw a boost in the quality of my paintings and the rate of learning just skyrocket. And I know you're saying like, oh, like I don't have time to paint every day. You don't have to paint every day, but just really assess the time that you have and be honest with yourself on what you can do. You know, everybody spends time on things they shouldn't be spending time on. Like how much time do you spend scrolling through Instagram? How much time do you spend binging Netflix? How much time do you spend just doing nothing? You know, you find time for the things that you really wanna do. You schedule that time. So if you wanna really improve your painting, you need to incorporate it into your lifestyle. Just like when you have a set time that you go to work that you go to bed, that you walk the dog, that you go to the gym. You need to do that with painting. And as time goes on and you make these small adjustments, it's gonna be a lot easier to fit painting in. You know, as you build the materials that you have, as you kind of create the space in your home where you paint, things are just gonna get better and better and better, but you have to start. But just setting the time, no matter what, to sit down and paint. I don't care if you're not inspired. I don't care if you don't have anything to paint. It's not an excuse go online, just find a picture or something, paint in your hand, literally hold your hand up and paint in your hand. There's no excuse, you know, not to paint. And when you do that, when you 
force yourself to do it even when you don't want to do it that's when you're going to see an increase in your skill set and honestly the trick to this is to really enjoy the process i think that's why i'm able to paint so much is that i just really enjoy the process of painting i definitely enjoy the actual process of painting more than having the end product honestly by the time i'm done with the painting i'm kind of tired of it and i'm really thinking about the next one i really don't care about the painting once it's done i just always looking forward to the process of painting so when you really enjoy the process of it it's not hard or it's not like you know you're having to be dragged to the easel to paint like i wake up every day just can't i can't get to the easel quick enough i can't get enough you know time painting i i it just i always want to paint more because i really enjoy the process you know i always say fall in love with the process not the end product if you do that it's going to be a pleasure to paint every day that's how you have to look at it you don't have to look like i have to paint every day you have to look at it, i get to paint every day once you change your mindset to that things will be a lot more enjoyable. All right now, the last thing that I'm really glad that I did, and I still do, is I have a very insane level of confidence when it comes to painting. I realized early on that if there's anything that I wanna paint, any style, you know, subject, whatever, I know that if I put in the time and I practice, I can paint that. I put absolutely no limitations on my painting. I'm not saying that I'm going to paint everything in every style that there is, you know, I'm going to have to choose. It's limited to what I have interest in and what I actually really want to do. But I know that if there's something I want to paint or a style that I want to paint, I am capable of doing it. You just really have to have that confidence because the reality is, is that you can. It's just a matter of time and effort. If you're willing to put in the time and you're willing to put in the effort, you will be amazed at what you will be able to achieve with your paintings. I didn't start out with the skill set that I have now. I have a much better skill set now than I did a year ago, than I did three years ago, than I did 15 years ago. I can remember when I was very little, I was like nine years old and I saw a face like just on a magazine and I just thought like, how would you draw that? How could anybody, like, how do you draw a face? It was, it was magic to me. It was something so out of reach that I couldn't even fathom being able to draw a face. But then by the time I was 12, like I could draw a pretty decent face. And experiencing that of having something that I thought at a time was absolutely impossible becoming a reality made me realize that goes for anything. Like nothing is out of reach. And if you go into your painting with that confidence, you're never going to give up. You're always going to be pushing yourself. You're always going to be getting better because you know that you will get there. The minute you think that you can't do something, that you can't get there, that I can't be a good painter, that I can never paint that good, I just don't have the artistic gene, like this isn't just cut out for me, that's when you're done. You need to get those thoughts out of your head because they're not going to help you. The way you're going to get good at painting is believing that you can get good at painting and just paint as much as possible. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Paint Talk. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to try out my Foundations of Oil Painting course, I got a link to that in the description below. Also down there is a link to my Patreon page, which has a full painting video tutorials. And if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.